Praxis Prepper. Hey everybody, this is Praxis. It's getting to that time of year again where we're thinking about heating season, and for us that means firewood. Firewood is a primary way that we heat here at our house. It's a wonderful way of heating your house, and I really love it. In this video, I'm going to talk about a couple of things. One is kind of general logistics about, uh, you know, heating with firewood and like how all that works. And the second is how to stack your firewood pile. I've, I've gotten some questions about how to do that, and while it is certainly possible to just throw a bunch of fi uh, firewood into a pile, as long as you keep it dry, it's gonna dry out just fine. There are ways you can do it to kind of make it dry faster, and especially make the firewood pile safer or more compact if you don't have a ton of room. So we're gonna talk about all that kind of stuff. But first, uh, let's talk about the general logistics of heating with firewood. I mentioned uh, this is the beginning of thinking about heating season, and for a lot of people, uh, that means, well, it's time to get a ahead of the curve and you know call the oil company or the propane company and have them top off our tanks. Uh, you know, just before uh, heating season is when you kind of think about that stuff and, and you know pat yourself on the back. It's like, oh, you got ahead of the game. Not so with firewood. If you're thinking about firewood now, you are way, way, way behind the curve. In fact, I know there are a lot of transplants from the city that moved out to the country recently. I've talked to some of them personally, and they've been thinking uh, about this time of year, autumn, as the time it's like, well, let's start, you know, fill up that firewood pile. Way too late for that. Uh, you know, if you're going to do that, you have to buy stuff that's been kiln, kiln, uh, kiln dried. Uh, because if you're burning wet firewood, you're not going to get as much heat out of it. Well, A, it's going to be kind of a pain, to, a pain in the butt for it to even start burning in the first place. But you're not going to get as much heat out of it because some of the heat energy is used to boil off the water that's inside of it. And also, you're going to get a lot uh, dirtier burn and there's going to be a lot more creosote building up in your chimney. So the best time to fill up your firewood pile, if this is something you want to get into, is right after the last fire that you built of the previous season. Uh, season. Usually around here, that's around March, when I feel like I'm pretty much done with uh, burning for the year, I start thinking about filling up my woodshed, whether that is calling someone and having them deliver firewood, which is very economical, that's a great way to go. But around here, I've got so many deadfall trees and things like that that I can just take a chainsaw to and get the fuel for free. That's the way that I usually do it. So in terms of how to stack a wood pile, like I said, you can just put wood in a pile and as long as it's uh, kept dry, kept, you know, kept from rain dropping on it and kept from humidity coming up from the ground underneath it, you know, it's going to dry just fine. But if you have a limited amount of space or you want to make your pile uh, particularly safe, there are some things you can do to try to enhance that. Here we are inside of my greenhouse. Uh, when I was getting ready for this wood burning season, like back six, eight months ago or so, uh, I didn't have a woodshed built yet. At this point, I do have my woodshed built, but I knew that the woodshed wouldn't be ready in time to dry out this firewood. It was, uh, the woodshed was ready before heating season began, but getting all your firewood into your woodshed and then two days later, you know, needing it to all be dry magically just wasn't gonna happen. So I've had it in this greenhouse for, uh, you know, all summer. And as you can see behind me, there are some horizontal logs that I have interspersed into the pile here. Now we're gonna talk about building a firewood pile and it might sound like I'm getting uh, overly specific about it, overly uh, persnickety about it, like it's, like it's an art and everything. And you know, I don't mean to take it to that level of uh, intensity, but there are a couple of basic Concepts that if you keep them in your head, you can make your firewood pile airier, uh, more compact, and especially safer. So let's talk first about uh, some different types of logs that you may come across. Here's one right here. This is kind of like your typical log. It's a cylinder shape. Uh, it looks like the kind of thing you picture if you're thinking of, of like a chunk of firewood. Uh, maybe you know it's got some mildew all over it. Maybe it's not ready for its like photo spread in like Martha Stewart Living magazine or anything like that. But you know it's a, a uh, arc typical cylindrical log. Now that's great, it'll burn really great, but these are actually kind of the worst things uh, in terms of stacking for a firewood pile. And the reason is because if you've ever seen like the Flintstones, it's a wheel <laughs> right there. This kind of thing rolls around really easily and the last thing you want is a bunch of wheels in your firewood pile. Just imagine trying to make a really tall stack of ball bearings. You're not gonna get very high before the whole thing falls to pieces. So while these are great and you're gonna have things like this, these are not your ideal players, especially on the edges. When you have things like this, you wanna put them more in the middle. And one thing that you can do if you have stuff like this is split it, turn it into uh, two halves, and then you're not gonna get something that's gonna be rolling around. Let's look at some other pieces that you might get. Now this one is uh, similar, it's also a cylinder shape, uh, but what this one's got is these little branches coming off uh, the sides. Now that makes it maybe a little bit uglier. Uh, you know, again, it's not ready for that like photo spread 
uh, in a magazine of like, you know, the, the beautiful logs next to the, you know, the wonderful fireplace hearth and everything. But pieces like this are really great when you're trying to stack because these arms can be used to kind of grab onto other pieces. So if you are going to uh, kind of get close to the edge of the pile, you can take a piece like this with these uh, little uh, branches coming off and you take one like this and you stack it on top of it. And when you get these two next to each other like that, this one is going to keep this one from rolling away. So if you get things that get little branches off of them, kind of hold those and have those kind of near the edges out here. And these are going to be one way of uh, preventing the fire uh, uh, firewood pile from rolling. Another way of doing that is by using pieces like this that are all split up. These are great. These are so easy to stack. These aren't going to roll anywhere. Pieces like this tend to really lock together and really rigidify your pile. So the more of this kind of stuff you have, especially again as you get towards the edge, the better. Now, as you are stacking things, uh, if you look at this one, uh, this one's like it's a little narrower here and a little wider here. As you're stacking stuff, you may get to a point where you know one side of your firewood pile is a little bit lower and one side's a little bit higher. You know, you want to try to avoid that as much as you can. Uh, you know, sometimes you can take pieces like this and maybe, uh, you know, put a wedge under it, under one side to try to get it a little bit level. But if you do get into that situation where you have kind of a wedge shape where one side's going to be a little fatter, one side's going to be a little thinner, when you're stacking it up, there's oftentimes a direction that is, uh, that you definitely don't want your pile to fall in and in a direction where you don't mind if it falls. There's a wall back here, so uh, any uh, situation where I had a narrower side, I was putting the narrower, narrower side facing the wall, so if the pile is getting destabilized, it falls into the wall and doesn't fall out this way on top of me. So that is one uh, method that you can use to kind of uh, keep it uh, stable, but uh, in particular, these guys are really handy to keep the pile from uh, you know, falling out uh, you know, off to the sides, and you can get it a little bit more vertical. In fact, you can get it pretty close to perfectly vertical, but I, I've got a little bit of a, um, a slope here just to make it that much extra safe. Let's look at this, this thing right here. We've got this piece here, and it's almost like kind of cantilevered, uh, uh, overextending uh, this end over here. And what keeps it from falling over the edge is the weight of these pieces over here. So uh, every uh, you know every couple courses, uh, I've got like two or three logs here, and then I put one of these horizontal pieces. And what I'll actually do is I'll put two of them side by side, one on the front side, one on the back side. And uh, this is actually a pretty good uh, example of something that you can do if you've got uh, one side that's a little higher than the other. If you've got two different pieces of firewood, I can put this one over the lower side and then this one over the higher side and you get it a little bit more level. Because you, when you're putting uh, these two pieces like this side by side, you really want those to create kind of a level, play, uh, a level plane so when you're putting your next course of logs on top, they're going to start on something that's kind of, uh, kind of flat. And as you can see, I'll just do that every couple courses, two or three courses, and then another horizontal piece, two or three courses, and then another horizontal piece. And you can really see what I've done here. I've got a lot of these kind of angular pieces out towards the edge. These are the ones that aren't going to roll. They're the ones that lock in with each other. This thing here is just a little chunk that I threw in there later on. That's something you can do with a lot of this stuff. It's just when you get a little gap and you get something thin, you can throw it in there later. Uh, and then you see as we get away from the edge, that's why I put some of these more round pieces in here. These are not as safe. These are more likely to roll. So I keep those back away from the edge. And by doing that, you really allow yourself to fit the firewood pile into the smallest space. This is very vertical, it goes very high, uh, but you're doing it in a way where this thing is, well, you, you know, you can kind of, you know, shake it around. It's not really going anywhere. I can grab stuff and I guess I can pull some of these guys out of here, but it's all very stable because, you know, we're maximizing the use of these kind of crazy things, these guys, and and these sorts of things where you have like extra branches that really help to lock the firewood pile together. So if you're new to firewood, the rule of thumb to remember is as soon as you're done with your last fire of this season, start thinking about ordering your firewood for next season. By, and by start thinking about it, I mean do it <laughs> right away. The drier you can get it, the more heat energy you're going to get out of it for the following season. And also it, you, you tend to get better prices that time of year because you don't want to be in the pack with everyone else at the end of the season, you know, trying to get that kiln drying stuff or whatever. And plus, it's just more expensive uh, to get the kiln drying stuff. I think it's a really great way of uh, just locking in your ability to uh, keep yourself warm, keep your family warm throughout the winter. Uh, you know, people that are dependent on oil heat, 
yeah, I don't think the majority of people that do that have an oil tank that is good for their entire, uh, the entire winter. It's like, you know, you, you, you're reliant upon there being a fuel truck that's going to come by and it's going to fill you up. With firewood, it's pretty easy to make sure that you just have everything you need. So at this point, I mean, things could just go crazy. Deliveries could sh shut down. The, the roads could all be impassable. Uh, I could get have a dome put over my house and, you know, no way in, no way out, and we could still heat. Although if there was a dome, the exhaust smoke from the wood stove fires would eventually asphyxiate us and it would just go terribly. Uh, but it's a really nice feeling to have all that stuff locked in ahead. And one of the best things I think about this, and I alluded to it earlier, is that it's free. Uh, I did my first wood stove fire about two days ago. We were testing out a, a new cylindrical stove oven that we have in line with our fireplace. Really wonderful device. It's working out great so far. And we were able to cook dinner, heat our house. Uh, I boiled some tea at the same time. And we did it with two logs about like this and some scrap cardboard that had just gotten delivered to our house. It's a great asset to have a wood stove because you can use stuff that's I mean, this, this tree just fallen down. I chopped it up. I think, I don't honestly remember where this specific log came from, but you just take stuff that is waste for most people, garbage for most people, the kind of stuff people want to get rid of. You take that and you turn it into a warm meal and a warm house. I think it's a great way of, of living, and especially if you have a, a really energy efficient stove. Uh, you know, they can burn things really cleanly and really take a waste product and turn it into a really valuable resource. That's it. Thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.